William in Kobajem, Netherlands writes, Hey Paul, in many posts of sound engineers I read, the amp has to be 50% more powerful than the speaker. In other words, a 100 watt speaker for a 150 watt amp. Okay. On the other hand, in the world of guitar amplifiers, the speakers need to have more power than the output power of the amp. In other words, a minimum of 150 watt speakers for a 150 watt amp. Why such a different approach? Okay, see if I actually understand. So we're saying that the speakers like these speakers are capable, well, this probably, <laughs> these are capable of a lot of power, but they're fairly efficient too. These IRS fives are about 90 dB efficient. So they don't need a lot of power, nor do our FR30 loudspeakers. These are about 87 dB efficient. But a good 100, 200 watt amplifier works great on these. Same with these. We've used these with 1200 watt amps and et cetera. So I, I'm not sure where this information you're getting comes from. What I suspect is a philosophical difference. So in high-end audio, I, me, others are big advocates of tons of headroom. We like to have more power available than is needed or even tolerated because A, it doesn't matter. You could have a 10,000 watt amplifier on this as long as you just didn't play it too loud, which is something I would never do, okay? I don't wanna damage my hearing. I'm not gonna play it at rock concert levels. That's just silliness. I, I wouldn't do that. So the amount of available power for this speaker or the FR30 loudspeaker that PS Audio makes really only has to do to make sure you have enough power, obviously, but as an advocate of big, big power to have lots of headroom and an effortless sound, that's why we would recommend, in the high-end audio industry, we would recommend that you get an amplifier easily twice the size that you need just so you have adequate headroom. In pro audio, in the music industry, I think the opposite is probably correct and probably a good idea to make sure that your speaker, if you're gonna play a guitar on your Marshall speaker and amplifier, you'd better make sure that that speaker can handle everything you can give it. Why? Because people do that. They turn that sucker up as loud as it'll go, distort it, blast it, go for it, and you don't want the speaker crapping out. So you have completely different goals. Here we're trying to recreate perfectly the sound that was captured on a recording. There, you're trying to blow people's heads off with, as Jimi Hendrix did, see how loud you can play it. So you better make darn sure that your amplifier is not gonna blow out your speaker because you might get it that loud. That's my best guess. All right, hope that helps. Thanks, bye.